Hi guys, on this show we're looking at Mondale, Fonda, Charles, Matheson, Fisher, Mason, Mail, and Cates. On this show we're looking at 1991's Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of 100 Things We Learned From Film. My name's Planty and I'm playing with the dolls. And I'm John and I'm just playing and seeing. <laughs> you can say playing with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> uh, oh, John, it's been an action-packed August. It's almost at an end. It can mean only one thing. Uh, the last episode of the month our patrons choice yep yep what are we talking about so we're looking at what i thought used to be good was drop dead fred mm, it's, it's, right, um, okay. yeah questionable it was from it's, your, uh, it's, it's your hero though rick mail it, it? it really is yeah, yeah but i think um i think they made a bad, bad decision but i'll come to that once we go okay. through the facts yeah smashing uh 100 things learned from film the podcast tries to learn 100 things from every film we cover john's watched it and has come up with tons of fucking things i've watched it and come up with tons of fucking things i mean neither of us have like uh but <laughs> i'm sure uh, we will have some fun going through the film spoilers are beholden but john what else could we, dear God, should we have been talking about from 1991? Man, there's, there's loads, right? There's Delicatessen, which I really oh, enjoy. Oh, mate, Delicatessen, I've got that on the, the shelf behind me. It's brilliant. It's the shit, in it? Uh, Boys in the Hood. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, I make every time. Uh, commitments, Kate Fear, uh, The People Under the Stairs, oh, Deceived. Yeah. I can't remember. Oh, no. I Deceived. Uh, I... I don't remember much about it. I remember watching it. I think Goldie, it was a Goldie Hornets, isn't it? All right, okay. Um, lost me. Sorry. Uh, Silence of the Lambs, one of my, oh, my favourites. The, yeah. the big winner yeah, that yeah. year, yeah. Uh, and My Own Private Idaho. Who's in that? I know. I recognise uh, the title. Keanu Reeves and River Phoenix. All oh, right, okay. Do you know what? I'll, I'll, see, since it's you, I'll end on a high. Double impact with two Jean Claude oh, Van Damme. Oh man! Oh, t- <laughs> twice, twice the trouble. Were they they're meant to be twins? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, one was the super, one was the super, the bad one, and one was the squeaky clean one. Oh, man. Yeah. God, okay. takes you back. Takes you back. Jesus Christ! This 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 month can't end soon enough. Uh, lovely patrons, <laughs> thank you, honest. Thank you for uh, giving us this to watch. If you want to become a patron and you want to pick up an extra episode every. Every single week, as well as some outtakes, usually the stuff that's too f- absolute filthy for this. Um, and <laughs> you also want to pick an episode every single month. It will cost you a quid uh, plus VAT. Uh, it will cost you a one dollar fifty. It will cost you two euro. Uh, I feel like we like people that pay in euros are getting the shitty end of the stick there. Oh, they really are. I'm, I, I'm just, really I just, sorry, I'm Mono. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got, I got fucked over from the my fucking. Euros. The fucking tans are having you again, Mono, eh? <laughs> it never fucking ends. Anyway, enough of us being awful. <laughs> so let's get started with the film. It opens as a universal, but also a new line cinema film. I can't remember the last time we had a new line film, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's known as The House That Freddie Built, because Nightmare on Elm Street was made on a budget of... $1.8 million and grossed over $57 million. That's a good return. That, that mid-80s money, that, John. Oh, God, I, that was crazy money. Absolutely. If I, all the bloody super pints of wine he wants. With that nah, you buy, you could, could have bought all the blockbuster videos. Yeah, Oil exactly. Um, in 1990, New Line release, would you believe, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Not here, they didn't. It was Hero Turtles here, of course. Um, which became the highest grossing independent film of all time with 135 million North American dollars. Oof, dear. Yeah. Uh, it was the biggest grossing independent film of all time until 1999. Do you know what beat it in 99? Uh, Titanic? Was that, <laughs> that wasn't was an independent film, though, was it? It was, well, of course, filming snot up your nose, 
crying in the fucking woods at the oh, Mark Plant story. No, uh, <laughs> Blair, Witch, Blair Witch Project. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, this it opens with this little girl. This little girl's being read fairy stories. She's got mm-hmm. goldfish in a bowl without any stones in the bottom. And I was kind of like, I'm pretty sure you're not meant to have a goldfish bowl without any stones. Yeah, in the that, that weirded me out as well. I'm like, where's this? Yeah. Where's the stones? Where's the stone? <laughs> Give me the stone. <laughs> uh, goldfish in a bowl without stones. Uh, the answer is that goldfish don't need what's known as substrate. There's nothing essential about having a uh, substrate or stones in the bottom, and a goldfish can survive quite healthily and happily without one. Nice. Nice. Go. Good to know. Uh, this kid, by the way, is young young Elizabeth. Um, she's being told this story of the prince. Um, and they lived happily ever after because the princess was a good little girl. Otherwise, the prince would have run away, says the mum. The little <laughs> girl says, what a pile of shit. <laughs> right. And, and so it begins. Absolutely. Uh, this, this young Elizabeth, Ashley Pelton, the actor, still mm. acting, does a lot of voice work. Uh, but big, big roles I could pick out was a couple of episodes of That 70s Show uh, right. and, uh, and Ghost World. Oh, God, that's... I've not seen that in a while. No, I haven't. Potential future episode. Anyway. We learn that she's a little prick. All right. Mm-hmm. We get this brilliant animated title sequence, which looks like it's done by wax crayons. Uh, yeah, it it's really quite does, blatantly it? An, an, an acted thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The French word crayon John, originally meaning chalk pencil, dates to around the 16th century and is derived from the word cray or chalk, which comes from the Latin word of crater or earth. Crayola introduced the number eight box of eight assorted colours, which became an immediate success. It was even featured in a postage stamp in early 1905, the year after it was released, 1904. Oof, the Lego of its time. Absolutely. Um, John, let's start early. I've got a quiz for you. Oh, bloody hell, right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, or, or when he's least expecting it, get him good. Right, <laughs> good. this is called Crayon. Or crayoff. Crayon. <laughs> crayoff. Crayoff. Crayon. Crayoff. Right? Crayon. Uh, <laughs> it does indeed. So you've got to tell me uh, if this is crayon, a real crayon, or crayoff bullshit that I've made up. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. You've got six. Come on, John. You can get six here. <sighs> Number one <sighs> Madder yeah. Lake. Madder Lake, as in madder than a lake. Madder Lake. Crayon. It's a deep red, John. It's a crayon. Ooh, ooh, well ooh, done. Ooh. It's a good start. Number two, inchworm. <laughs> that's got to be a crayon, isn't it? Sick green, John. It's a crayon. Oh, that's yeah. Sick. I mean, that's my 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 explanation of it. It looks like a, a, a very putrid colour. Uh, number three, peach dragon. Be off. Uh, Crayoff. <laughs> Correct. It's a crater. Crayoff. I made that one. Uh, number four. Fuzzy Wuzzy. Crayon. It is. It's brown. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a woman. Was a bear. <laughs> fuzzy Wuzzy was fuzzy. <laughs> uh, number five. National Disgrace. <laughs> uh, oh, Crayoff. Correct. I made that one up. Uh, number six. Wash the dog. Crayon and on and on. It is a crayon. It's gold, John. It's gold. I love gold uh, crayons. I've, 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 I've got a strategy now for your games. You never start off with a fake. So every, every right, one no, is gold. Okay. So what you're saying is next week, start off with next, a fake. Uh, <laughs> that will that'll put me in the shit. <laughs> that will put me in the, the, the crayon shit. <laughs> the wash the dog. <laughs> We see this grown-up Elizabeth um, in the car. She's going to speak to her husband, Charlie, who yep. works at this Jaguar dealership. Jaguar, which was founded on the 14th of September 1922 in Blackpool, no less. Get out! Get in! Whoa, hey! Right in there, big man. Right nice in there. Man. Fantastic. Oh, before it's... we go any further, yeah. this is obviously a bit, of a, a bit of a point for me, and I'm, I'm going to get it out there quickly. I love Rick Mill. I also love... Robin Williams. Robin okay. Williams was offered the part. Right. And they take it. And both my idols died in 2014. 
Wow, did they die the same year? Yeah, same year. Wow, wow. Oh, two facts for you, big man. Two facts. Absolutely, I've got, I've, I've, I've got them both down. Uh, considering you got uh, four out of six for the crayons, well done. Um, <laughs> we can do this. We can do this. <laughs> Steady. I haven't seen what you've got, so I don't know. Anyway, she's having a shit relationship with this. She's confronting him how the relationship. I, I've written here ended, right? And, yes. and, he's, and it hasn't really ended. But then he's like, it's your idea um, about me going to live with Annabelle. Or whatever. Annabelle. I've written here, he's, yeah. he's floozy. Um, and and it's, mm. I, he's kind of like, yes, it was a great idea that you said I should do that. And you were right. Uh, and I'm glad you told me to do that. And it was the best thing that could possibly happen to us and, and blah, 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 blah. Um, now, for me, right, that just seems like the kind of pricks that read that book, the game, you know, the Aye. fucking, the, those guys <laughs> yeah, that yeah. just try and neg out women and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I just still um... one of those guys. Fucking prick. Uh, it's bad crap <laughs> yeah. It, it did sound like that whole thing going on, didn't it? Like, Oh, that's a great idea. Your idea, your idea. This is a great idea. Yours. Oh, no. And, oh, fine. Well, that he's obviously had someone orchestrated for ages and he was a fucking deviant. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Deviant. He's, yeah. He's not right. He's not right. Away. <laughs> yeah. So this blonde customer takes for a test drive and he pulls up at the lights, but so does Elizabeth. He quite liked the kind of the way this scene was. He suggests that they'll want to see one another again and they shouldn't throw away two years of marriage. She explains to him, it's been three years, just gone. Oh. And do you know what? She's really annoying. <laughs> like, she is not likeable at all. Who the Phoebe Keats? Yeah, she's not a likable character. Oh, no, no, at no, all no in she's, this. And she's but, great, though, as well. She grows exceptionally. You know, she, she grows in the wind. Yeah. And I've missed the fact that it says it's uh, 21 years later, by the way, from then to, to now. So basically, that little girl was 1970. In 1970, the Apollo 13 moon mission launched. That was the third trip to the moon. More mm-hmm. waste of money. Uh, the Beatles broke up. Hey! And the first <laughs> 747 landed in London. There you go. Have those. Oh, not, Phoebe not Cates, by the way, retired after 1994's Princess Caribou. But then who wouldn't? I, I didn't know she was married to Kevin Klein. She is, yeah. I didn't know she, that, so that was news to me. I was blown I mean, away by that. Arguably, he should have retired after 1999's Wild Wild West. Yeah, oh, God, I, oh, the, oh, I loved him in the bloody fish called Wonders, but um, he was supposed he, to do a cameo in this. Oh, right, okay. Apparently, he's supposed to do it, but it's a request because obviously. Was, was he meant to be Namby Pamby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get me started on Namby Pamby. I looked up Namby Pamby. I wish okay. I had. You'll wish you hadn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> she goes to phone her friend, and while she's on the phone, uh, a car gets broken into and a bag is stolen. Then some of the guy steals the car. Yeah. This little yeah. Datsun Cherry type motor she's got. It was, I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She gets back to work and it turns out that she's a court stenographer, John. Again, we've been doing this road, haven't we? Have we done stenographer? I think we... Um, Possibly for um, Michaels and Vinnie, arguably. Anyway, a court reporter or stenographer, John, they note the court shorthand, the average wage in the UK today, £29,000 a year or 14 quid an hour. Sounds like a lot, does it? Would you like to know the skills that you need to be a stenographer? I would, John. Yes, I would. Uh, you need a higher level in English. Uh, they need the ability to work to deadlines, uh, an understanding of law and medical industry, an understanding of stenography software and equipment, clear speaking voice, excellent communication skills, excellent listening skills, good computer skills, and a very nice face. <laughs> well, Phoebe <laughs> Cates wins that one. She yeah, she really does. Wins that one. Uh, she looks better getting out of a pool. Uh, but, you know, oh, a, yes. Hey? yes. Oh. Anyway, this a true story of a stenographer uh, from The Guardian, 2014. A Manhattan court stenographer caused chaos in New York's legal system when he types nonsense instead of recording the proceedings in the trials for which he was responsible including in one case, reportedly writing, I hate my job, I hate my job, I hate my job, I hate my job, (laughs) into the transcript. We've all done that. Uh, (laughs) A source at the New York State Unified Court System confirmed that the stenographer, Daniel Kachansky, not not that one, 43, (laughs) had been fired after officials learned of issues with the transcripts for six trials, 24 other legal proceedings that he had worked on. Bloody hell, man. What a guy. Oh, boy. What a boy. Amazing. 
<laughs> she, ex- <laughs> she she comes in. She explains. Uh, Sorry, I'm late. I've just lost my husband, my bag, and my car. And the judge is like, "All in one lunch one break." One, one lunch break. <laughs> good yeah. line, but not as good as the the line from the guy that's on trial. Did you catch this? No. Do what I did. Plead insanity. <laughs> I liked that a lot. I liked that a lot. The judge calls her over and sacks her on the spot, which the judge cannot do. He can ask her to leave court, but he cannot sack her. Um, I can only figure that the stenographers must be ten a penny. Yeah. yeah. As she's leaving, she falls over this bag, which looked very specifically placed. <laughs> like I thought it was Mickey that placed it at first. Yeah, sure it's not because he's got his hands full anyway. Mm. Uh, yeah, she falls over into the arms of Mickey Bunce, uh, <laughs> who used to live down the street. I, I don't know this actor, but he looks like non-union Zac Efron to me. He's, he's been in a few things. Uh, has he? And yeah. for life, Mick. Oh, he's in that bloody Super 8. Is he? So see, he's the 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 the, the lassie's dad. See the the grungy one. It's got no. an issue with him. That's that's the same guy. Wow. Yeah, that's I know. Crazy, isn't yeah. it? Okay, fair enough. So hang on. So the little girl at the end of this grows up to be the girl in Super Eight. I mean, eh? blown, blown away. Blown, blown away. Well, that was set in the seventies or something, wasn't it, or the eighties? Yeah, eighties. It was meant to be. It was meant to be Stranger Things before Stranger Things, and it's just pish. I know. It's, I was really it's, a lot of, it's a lot of le- lens flare and. Nothing yeah, else. oh yeah, piss off, JJ. Anyway, uh, Mickey Bunce is there because he's getting divorced. He reminds her that she was a handful as a kid and that she used to terrorise the street. This flashback of this line, and I knew it was coming, and I quoted it straight away because it's not really much of a line. It's just, oh, Grandma Burns. And the woman turns around <laughs> and gets bucket the pain. thrown at her. <laughs> 2.5 litres of good home durable Grand Via matte emulsion paint, John. 20 quid at B&Q. Boom. There you go. Uh, she also uh, shaved the cat, which made me feel a little bit sad because that cat is now dead. Oh, God, I That's your... Yeah. Oh, and, no. Uh, obsessed with these dead animals. Um, <laughs> outside the building, she's met by a pal. I want to say she's called Janie Carrie Fisher. Yes. Who yes, I assume enough. is not just acting in this, but she was famous for punching up scripts. So if a script was shit, they would send it to Carrie Fisher and Carrie Fisher would put gags in. Ah, uh, she re- she re- rewrote a lot of her dialogue in it. Yeah. Oh, in this. All oh, right. Okay. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. apparently that's one of the things she did do. I think because that's right. what she does, obviously. But no, I think yeah. she was good in this. Actually, obviously, before she started hitting the coat card because she could talk properly. <laughs> yeah, she could. Yeah. <laughs> oh, R.I.P. By the way. I know. What a legend. Absolute legend. She says, uh, she's she's talking about the pain. She says, look, pain makes you interesting. Look at Elvis. Didn't Elvis kill himself? Yes, but before so, he was very interesting. <laughs> very <laughs> oh. keen to point out Elvis didn't kill himself. I mean, arguably he did. Well, like commit suicide. Depends. Uh, you know. No, no, no further way than Michael Jackson did. But was his wasn't burger related though? Burger related. I can't say it. I'm so Scottish for this. Pur- purple burglar alarm related. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Draw me into these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Talking about rewriting the script. Apparently, yes. the script, script was offered to Tim Burton. All right. Okay. As a director. Aye. Knocked it back. Jesus. How dark would that have been? I know. I'm trying to th- you think it's, do you think it's dark, dark, it's dark at the end? Well, apparently, and this is something I'd looked up but when I watched it when I was a lot younger, but the buzz was that they wanted them to tone it down. So things like picking noses and stuff like that, they wanted to cut all that out because they thought it was too gross. But that's like, the that's the least offensive bit of the film, picking noses. Apparently they, they thought it was too mm, grotty. Okay. Well, whatever. Whatevs. Whatevs, Trevs. Um, and she explains that she loves Charles and doesn't want him to go. Uh, back at her apartment, a uh, mother's there. Mum's this right overpowering character, oh, isn't she? She's awful. Basically, no. drives her back to the childhood home. Uh, she says, "Don't step on the carpet. It's been cleaned. That'll come back shortly." Mm-hmm. Back in a bedroom, it's basically a child's room, isn't it? This pink bedroom. Yeah. Um, she goes in the cupboard and drops this box of toys out of this shelf, including an old Jack in a Box. Uh, which looks and sounds like something out of a film about fucking Victorian haunted toys. Oh god, I. I it? You expect it to be the haunt, like I don't know, the fucking Annabelle Twelve, the haunted Jack in the Box. 
Since and they're still being... they're still making those films. They're still in the Conjuring universe. Yeah, uh, right? yeah, it's still it's still a thing. Yep, yeah. it's still, like, still they're still Conjuring. Surely, Drop Dead Freddy's in the Conjuring universe. It's going to be in it. Anna Hill. <laughs> Anna <Heim. laughs> She's that night. She's crying in her sleep. We flash back to her in bed as a Wayne getting hit on the head by this hand from behind a pillow. It's fucking horrifying. Something like that happens, you know, like the grudge. You got got a hand coming out of it, an eye I coming out of the head. Yeah. No. <laughs> she wakes up. The Jack in the Box is doing uh, "Pop Goes the Weasel" as she awakes. A uh, Jack in the Box, John. Um, the phrase "Jack in the Box" was first used, seen used in literature by John Fox in his book "Actes and Monuments," first published in 1563. Uh, then he used the term as an insult to describe a swindler who would cheat tradesmen by selling them empty boxes instead of what they actually purchased. Ooh. What a cad and a bounder, eh? I know. Uh-huh. The American fast food company, John, Jack in the Box, began using the toy and the phrase as their mascot in the early 50s. And a Peter Rabbit Jack in the Box at John Lewis, twenty four ninety nine. Just Ooh. hoping it doesn't have the voice of that unfunny, fat-tongued prat, James Corden. <laughs> Oh God! Second yeah, about that prick. Yeah, he's uh, he's never going to come on this podcast, is he? Nah. Maybe, I should, maybe I should message him and go, "Oi, listen, you're not funny. We're not funny. Come on the podcast." Oh, I've I've written an article though about um, stars that are hard to work with. And apparently, he's about yeah, prick. Of course he is. Of course he's he just is. An absolute prick. And he ignored his kids, his wife and his kids when they were on a flight. He just moved away from them. He's just an arrogant wee prick. I don't like him. Oh, I mean that's kind. Of, oh, Jesus, he, he strikes me as the kind of man that would that's, that will get divorced and won't pay any alimony. I just, I just don't get why people find this funny. I really don't. I could go into this all day, but I just don't. I do not find it funny. And um, um Gavin and Stacey, I always thought the he's Gavin the least funny, funny bit. Yeah, he's the least funny bit of the whole um, thing. And he, he, he wrote most of it. I think, and I've said this a lot, If you've seen, I don't know if you've seen Heaven. I bet Kirsty's seen Heaven, if you haven't. Um, Heaven is basically Gavin and Stacey, but not unkind to the people from the area. So it's right. it's basically Gavin and Stacey, but in uh, Newcastle. Oh, right. Um, and it's, yeah, and, and, and he takes his, I want to say, girl, posh girlfriend from York home to meet his mum and dad. And mm. his dad's um, uh, Vic Reeves. His oh, dad's Vic Reeves and his, his, his sister. It's great. It's really good. If you can find heaven on something. Yeah, it's really good. Two series. Uh, it's funny. It's it's sad. It's great. Gina McKee's his mam. She's always great. Uh, yeah, it's it's like Gavin and Stacey, except it's actually funny. That's good. Yeah. All right. and, and it's and it's not unkind like the other one. Oh, aren't Welsh people funny? That's not, not how it works. It's not, no, no. It's not how it works. Yeah. Oh, aren't yeah. funny accents funny? <laughs> oh, aren't I funny because I'm a fat company that eats a lot of food? No, no, that's that's not funny. That's just because people call you fat because you're fat, mate. I, I've had that my whole life. I'm fat. People call me fat. I deal with it. It's not an issue. And it's not funny. Hey, kind, kind of is. <sighs> That's, so now I know, so yeah. Now. I know, yeah. yeah. I tell you what, I'm, I'm a pretty, I'm pretty angry. I, we people are meant to be jolly, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking angry. Jesus Christ! <sighs> <sighs> right, the woosa can't do it. I've got camera. <sighs> Getting out of bed, she takes the tape off this Jack in the Box, and this fucking Tribble flies out and oh, no. this green, hairy fucking thing. Um, it bounces on all the walls like flubber. But covered yep. in pubes. Yeah, yeah. Which, which I assume is what <laughs> happens to flubber if it goes on the floor. It's it covered in yeah. like grit and pubes and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> she looks under the bed, nothing. And when she looks up, it's who? Oh, the great Rick Meal. Fantastic Rick Meal. Now, oh. John, this is this is going to separate the wheat from the chaff. Who uh, who's your favourite Rick Meal character? So uh, it's it's. <sighs> See, I really used to like Alan Bastard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rick the Prick was really good, but yeah. I'm going to say Bottom was his best. I, yeah. I don't know, there's just something about... They, they are the, disgusting uh, fucking Rich shit like, boys uh, who live on the edge of society. Aye. <laughs> 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 for its time, it was, it was, I loved yeah. it. So, yeah, he's, he's my favourite character. Who's yours? Don't say uh, Flash Art. I, Flash Art's really <laughs> That's that, cheating. Flash that's that's cheating. cheating. I know. No, you can't have that. Uh, no, it's Richie's. It's Richie's hands down. Right. Hands down. It, yeah. it, they are just 
They're yes, just awful, awful people. Oh, Terrible totally, yeah. people. And even, if, <laughs> even if at some point you think to yourself, actually, I, I do feel a little bit of pity and a little bit of emotion towards Richie. Mm-hmm. He's he's mm-hmm. just he's just disgusting. And, oh, and Eddie's Eddie's fucking horrible. <laughs> Eddie a... treats him like garbage. Oh, I know, I know. And he takes it. It's it's, I... it's like dysfunction. It's like it's got a dysfunctional marriage. It is. It is absolutely, absolutely. There are, there are, there are, there are a couple of, uh, they're a part, they're, they're a partnership. They're never going to get anybody else. Um, yeah. I said brick, not penis. Uh, <laughs> I do all the time. He's looking for the dolls. Uh, where are the dolls? Oh, hello, Jemima. Oh, hello, such and such. You're going to die. He clobbers one and bites the head off the other one, which I thought was oh, really yeah. good. Um, Mister Pooh, you're going to die too. Rips all his stuffing out. I, I quite like that. Poor Mr. Pooh. I know. Yeah. His line is, um, his line is, uh, where are the toys? Where's the fire truck? Which is me whenever I'm talking to any child over 11. Come on, <laughs> where are the toys? Where's like that, that fire truck? Yeah, we don't. We don't do toys. It's coming in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming in a minute, yeah. Um, outside, uh, he, oh, she explains the toys have gone because she's grown up. Uh, he grown up. Oh, we can do grown up things. Outside, he finds some dog poo, gets it on his shoes. Oh, God, yeah. Um, Rick Mail circus performing stunt double walks on his hands into the room mm. on the clean carpet before jumping all over the furniture and the thing. Yeah. Dog poo, dog poo, lovely, lovely dog poo. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of love the, the kind of the, the oh. song. I, again, I assume he he wrote all of his like most of his lines. Like he punched up most of this stuff. Aye, I think it was he, he done. It was a few suggestions he put in. Can't remember what ones exactly, but he put in a few. Yeah. But, um, that inkwell thing was a bit weird, wasn't it? Grabbing an inkwell. What the hell? I, I, I've ri- <laughs> I have written here. He finds an ink pot, which people haven't used since 1906. You can still buy them, though. I can get you one can of them really? for a fiver, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't want one, but thanks. Uh, for, yeah, I'll just end up getting on the carpet with, <laughs> with the lovely, lovely dog poo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, she does a great catch, by the way. She's yeah, like, really like, yeah, fantastic. One handed catch. She recommends hide and seek. He hides and she fucks off to bed. <laughs> uh, next morning, she comes down and mum's scrubbing the carpet. Yep. Uh, she's drinking coffee and he spots what he calls the mega bitch. Aye. Uh, now. That all the time, mega bitch. Yeah. He, 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 now, I found this, what I thought was a really interesting bit of a uh, bit of chat from the uh, from the director, this guy, mm-hmm. Mr. Mr. Jong. Apparently, he said, Rick said mega bitch a few times, but we were only allowed to say it twice. So the rest of the time, he had to say mega beast. Because he does oh, really? part way through. Yeah, I, I caught both times he did mega bitch. This is the first one. Mm-hmm. I'll point out later on where it is. I think I've written it down. Um, what the director also says, uh, we were a really good match in character uh, recording this first meeting. He says, I wasn't as expressive as he was, uh, but on a political level, I was very much in the same vein. While we were shooting, Margaret Thatcher stepped down and he said it was a disaster because now we couldn't make jokes about him anymore. <laughs> Me and Rick Mailman. Just, yeah, not right. Rick Mailman. That's, uh, uh, that's uh, no, by the way, no, okay, solidarity no. with the fucking postal workers this week, guys. <laughs> if you uh, if you live near a fucking sorting office, go and take them some cans of pop. Uh, they'll be striking probably as you listen to this or later in the week. Uh, yeah, go and take them some nice things because it's going to be fucking warm and they deserve paid better to be mm. bitten off your fucking dogs. Not you, John, but yes, <laughs> also you. Uh, <laughs> So, um, he looks in the fridge. Uh, maybe there's a steak in here that we can drive through her heart. Nice gag. Like that. Okay. Clever. Yeah. Uh, too, too, too clever for kids in uh, 91. Uh, Mum shuts the fridge door on him and he squeezes his head out. This big, flat, plastic head. Looked good because it was an actual good. mass. Looked good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Knee CGI. CGI this time. Oh, mate, when we see the CGI, though, it was jarring. Oh, Fucking hell. Uh, and he, he's on the floor. He, sli- he, he he gets his head right, and he slides himself up to look up Mum's skirt. It's really funny, says Elizabeth, because he goes cobwebs. But oh, John, man. upskirting is no joke. It was all its time, big man. Everybody uh, was at it. <laughs> uh, the Voyeurism Act, John, a Fences Act of 2019 in the UK is an act of Parliament which amends the Sexual Offences Act 2003 to make upskirting a specific offence of voyeurism. Good. 
The legislation also protects men wearing kilts. Oh, I bet everybody, as soon as you wear one, the first thing people say is, are you, are you a true Scotsman? You need to either pull up and show or just say, yeah, and walk away. Yeah, and this, yeah. this means if any uh, if anybody tried to upskirt you, John, at uh, a, a wedding you're at, then uh, they can, uh, they, well, they can be charged if anybody, if anybody under the tries Act. To, anybody tries to grab a bagpipes, it's uh, <laughs> straight to the police station. What <laughs> <laughs> is the noise yours makes, I believe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like a, a Scottish Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> Mum explains the reason the marriage didn't work is because uh, of her not trying hard enough. Oh, uh, he's yeah, like, you was... got married. You've been doing it like the pigeons. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then he runs out to the garden to kick the fuck out of pigeons. Oh, it's like pigeons. a sponge song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, the nice. garden, in the garden, he explains that he can't go home until she's happy. So get happy. Clonk with a frying pan. I mean, that's no. not going to do it. That's bottom it, behaviour, that, isn't it? Bottom it behaviour. Is. Yeah, absolutely is. He explains he's going to help her, uh, and she says he never helped. So he kicks her in the shins and runs in front of runs the fire in. truck. <laughs> uh, this fire truck looked like it was out of fucking Keystone Cops. It <laughs> really did, didn't it? That was old school. Uh, it's a Persh fire truck, this one, John, from Peter Persh and Sons, not to be confused with Peter, Paul and Mary. I, I don't know who that's a reference for, John. I thought it was in a Persian. <laughs> was that uh, one of the way to Paris? For a fire truck? Founded in 1900, it was claimed to be the first producer of modern motorised fire engines in the United States. It folded in 1987 when they made the very last fire engine. Probably the fucking one in this film. Probably. This fire truck hits him and basically carries his body away and just leaves his, his boots behind, which is pretty good. Mm-hmm. In a flashback, he wakes little Elizabeth up to play burglars. This kid's cute. I don't care what anybody says. You yeah. know, I, you know my, my view usually on fucking child actors. This yeah. kid, she's cute, cute and she's pretty good. Yeah, and he's like, let's go, let's go, our Buster Browns on. Oh, yeah, did you now? Did you how up? how was you looking up Buster Browns, John? I just knew there were shoes. I didn't know. All them right, up. okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I had to look them up, right? Mm-hmm. Um. So the type of lace-up shoes named after the cartoon character Buster Brown, mm-hmm. who appears to be some sort of posh fop boy. From the thirties, uh, I thought it was like like a like Charlie Drake idea, like a wee funny guy. I may be wrong. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Yeah, no, he was he 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 was used to advertise these particular shoes. So a company made the shoes. Uh-huh. Oh, and they, they had called the... them the Buster Browns. It had like the the trademark of the cartoon advertising. Oh, the ah, comic right, advertising, okay. yeah. mate. Uh, they steal the silverware from the kitchen. Mum and Dad wake up thinking it's a house breaking. By the way. How does mum look older in the flashbacks? I know. That was astonishing. I know. And the dad's pretty cool. I like the dad, doesn't it? I, I like he's... the dad. Do you, think he was, do you think he was British? He sounds yes. British, yeah, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't look him up. Um, but yeah, yeah. Because he's, he's, it was a bit weird because... He's got knee lines. <laughs> he's got hardly any lines. <laughs> it's just a bit weird how the only two people that are British and are... The imaginary friend and the dad. The, and the father. Yeah, the that's very true. She comes into contact with these gladioli and he's like, oh, no, not gladioli. Uh, and she's obviously allergic t- to them. Uh, mm. She sneezes. And this is where Fred's 1991 mm. cartoon character gets fucking... Yeah, it's pretty bad. Bounces all over the place. Yeah, it looks like pretty bad. garbage. <laughs> uh, gladioli, John, perennial flower, means they come back every year. Part of the Iris family. And, of course, favourite flower of Dame Edna Everidge. There you go. There you go. Uh, also, Edna. very, very popular with Morrissey. There's a club if you'd like to go. Just like slam people with him. Yeah, didn't he? <laughs> well, I, I, to be honest, I tell you what, if I saw Morrissey in the street and I had some gladioli, I'd probably slap him with them too. <laughs> what a prick. What a fud. God, we're so judgmental, isn't we? But he has a fud. Ah, oh, he's fucking awful. He's absolutely awful. And I love the Smiths. Absolutely love the Smiths. Turns out Johnny Marr's lovely enough for the two of them. So he can be as much of a right-wing fucking gammon prick as he wants. Because Johnny <laughs> Marr's a lovely fella. Dad rings the police, but uh, Fred steals the downstairs phone pulling the cord out, which ends the call to them. Uh, Fred smashes this window to get out and buries the bag of silver in the flower bed. The yep. police show up uh, and smash down the door 
they totally bypassed the, the blatant kid and the, well, the blatant yeah, the kid standing yeah, in the garden. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they used they didn't use the Irish way of kicking a door in. Um, <laughs> but they uh, <laughs> they arrest Dad as the break as the one breaking the entry. Fred explains Elizabeth needs to be what she wants to be and not like the mega beast because she's a mega beast. This is yep. a mega bitch, by the way. Uh, she pinky promises, and I was kind of like, okay. Fred's not such a bad guy. He understands. You don't mm. pinky promise, John. You do the little fingery thing. Yep. Yeah. So the pinky promise originally you promised the finger. So if you broke a promise, it was mm. that somebody could cut off your little pinky finger. Well, what? That's yeah. sinister. It's sinister. I'm not, not going to be a bloody pinky promising anymore. Yeah, you will. Yeah, <laughs> you will. No, I'm not going to promise. <laughs> uh, back in the now, there's this montage of her getting the same haircut and outfit as a mum. It's horrifying. She looks Gosh, about fifty. Right, no, didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, they get home to this letter through the door from Charles. He misses their mornings and the games they used to play. You're like a Lynch Barge 83 fine wine. Did you look that up? Of course I did, John. <laughs> um, a case of nine bottles in the UK today. £1,024 from Wine Owners Exchange in London. Don, 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 don. The London, don. London, don, 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 don. They say the uh, Danger Mouse's house. That's <laughs> exactly where it is. Yeah. <laughs> She heads to the apartment. Fred's there. Turns out he's not dead. He wrote the note. Instead, he starts calling her names, which makes Elizabeth cry. It's basically a massive prick to her. Oh. And then when she starts crying, he's like, it was only a joke. I'm like, Gas- Jesus. Gaslighting the little prick. He's gaslighting. Is, it fu- is he fucking Ben from Film Floggers? I mean, <laughs> that kind of behavior. So what's so special about Charles, he asks. She loves him. He's sweet and he's romantic. And that makes Fred sick. He is none of those things. Aye. I don't think he was ever any of those things. I mean, he might have been. I used to be. I used to be nice. I used to be romantic, John. I used to be kind and loving. And Life two years into the relationship, I'm nothing but fucking horrible to you. <laughs> <laughs> giving, giving you rotten quizzes and all this kind of stuff. I know like, you hate me, man. man that's <laughs> a fucking warning. That is a red, red flag. <laughs> that is. <sighs> I think we just blow up. We'll do it later, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do it off the air. We'll do it in post. <laughs> As I always say, we'll do it in post. We'll just uh, ed- I'll just edit you out. <laughs> <laughs> just me talking not, to myself. <laughs> not while you're in fucking Amsterdam, you don't. Oh, um, shit. <laughs> in a, uh, that night, she sneaks out to Jane's houseboat. Jane's got this houseboat, by the way. Oh, Jesus. Amazing. I love this. Uh, it's a paddle yeah. steamer as well. It was a paddle a pa- steamer. And it was yeah. a real residence. It was actual. Oh, was it? Uh, yeah, it was an actual okay. real houseboat. She explains she needs to get away from Fred. Janie allows her to sleep on the couch. In a dream, Fred's cutting baby Elizabeth's hair. And when she wakes up, grown-up Elizabeth's hair has been cut, which is really weird. Janie explains to her, uh, well, I've written here her partner, Mer. We find out it's not her partner. <laughs> uh, yeah. That Elizabeth has an imaginary friend. Mer says he never had an imaginary friend, just wet dreams. <laughs> oh, no, no. Very bad, wasn't it? <laughs> it's very bad. <laughs> uh, I was kind of like, wow, that's fucking. <laughs> no, it's, it's yeah, we don't want to think about old man wet dreams. No. Uh, I believe. <laughs> I can't quite figure out this this relationship because Elizabeth's having tea on the deck. On the deck? Tea on the deck? And she spots Charles in our speedboat. That looks like our speedboat. That's Charles. I mean, she's a stenographer. Yep. He works at, at Jaguar. He's a car, drives sal- a Jaguar. He's a car salesman. He's a car salesman, but mm-hmm. just a car salesman, really. Yeah, yeah. We have a speedboat. Maybe they went on bullseye. <laughs> But yeah, because you like that looks like a speedboat, Charles. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? How can she? It looked like bloody Captain Ron from distance. It did look like Captain Ron. <laughs> Captain Ron. Um, she decides to head after him in the houseboat. Fred shows up dressed as a pirate, smashes up the engine, um, and they basically sink the boat. Um, oh yeah, it's just it's a disaster. Hard to watch because I looked, like after that I actually looked up the average prices of houseboats in the UK and okay. in the USA. So this is a weird one because the average price of a houseboat in the UK is between two hundred fifty thousand and four hundred fifty thousand. Right. Yeah, but the average ho- uh, price of a houseboat in the USA is between fifty thousand and three hundred fifty thousand. So it was more expensive. Why? Um, For why? Yeah, I guess it's things like where they're moored, where they're docked, and that, isn't it? But you, but you can't like houseboats. You can't sail them. You can only moor them 
in harbours because they're not meant for blue water. Because mm-hmm. obviously it's designed with crack and stuff like that. So I don't really see the difference between ours and theirs considering you can't really see them. There's nothing special. So just no, guess... like we get fucking fucked over again, big man. <laughs> got us a whole PlayStation thing in it. Buy it for $499. Buy it for £499 here. Seconds me, big guy. Seconds me. It is disgusting. <laughs> uh, they don't even have canal barges like we do. Exactly. <laughs> Janie's office, Elizabeth turns up sodden to explain that the boat's been sunk. She said, all my things were there. Well, they're still there. They're just not so near the top of the water. That was funny. <laughs> I like. uh, that was good. Um, do you think I have imaginary friend clause in my insurance? I Googled it, John. There's no such thing as imaginary friend clause in insurance. Mm. Certainly not in houseboat insurance. Uh, and then it just made me think of uh, a couple of weeks ago when I looked up uh, the, the bear insurance, the right to bear arms. You know, that fucking American oh, I, company that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that if you shoot the wrong person, pricks. God. Oh. It's a horrible thing. Horrible thing. <laughs> uh, Fred shows up, and when Janie thinks she has him by the neck, she's beating thin air and basically making a scene, isn't she? Aye. Which is, it, is, good. is good. It reminds me of that scene in Liar Liar. When he's batting himself and he's like, "What are you doing? I'm kicking my own ass." <laughs> it's like that sort of scene. I was like, "That's brilliant." It made me laugh. Elizabeth meets Mickey Bunce for dinner. Fred's there, but of course Mickey can't see him, so he thinks she's just mad, and he's still into her. Like he has got it so bad for her that, like, yeah. when she's trying to peer around him, she's smashing glasses. Mm-hmm. Um, this acting against nobody that she's doing is really good, though. Like this, oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. see him and then you don't see him, and, mm-hmm. and it's really good. It's really good acting. Uh, Fred throws her dinner, and Mickey takes this as a chance to do the same. Uh, really, he's not right, <laughs> but I guess you do <laughs> stupid stuff for love, don't you? Yeah, he can, he can see underneath the flats and the, the long dress, can't he? He knows there's a, a Ferrari under that. <laughs> <laughs> Fred and Elizabeth argue, which ends in Elizabeth smashing this violinist's instrument. Mum has to oh, bail her out. God. Yeah. Takes her to see this doctor. Right. Yeah, she uh, has, has to pay for the violin as well, didn't she? She does, yeah. She's like, well, she's like, why would you have such an expensive violin? She's writing a check. Remember checks? Remember? Uh, I looked up the world's most expensive violin. Yeah. It is uh, Stradivari. Is it Stradivari? Stradivarius. Stradivari. Stradivarius, yeah. Um, and it's called the Messiah. Uh, <laughs> it's not the Messiah. It's a very <laughs> shitty <laughs> instrument. <laughs> uh, it was made in 1716 and is valued at $20 million. Wow. Jeez, oh. <sighs> That's a lot of money for a, a, basically a fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> the chance would be a fine thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, she gets a bob, didn't she? Yeah, she does get a bob, yeah. yeah, yeah, bob. yeah. So I looked up the bob. This blew my mind as well. So the cut was invented in 1909 by a Parisian hairdresser called Antoine de Paris. Not his real name. I hope it is. But 1909, <laughs> I thought it was for the 60s, but no. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, I was thinking, Twiggy, Carnaby Street, they're swinging 60s. <laughs> no, they're swinging 1860s. Crazy, isn't it? That's Absolutely crazy. nutty as fuck, mate. Uh, she takes him to the mum takes her to the doctors, one of the country's leading experts in dealing with the imaginary friend syndrome. Yep. Uh, in the waiting room, uh, spread Fred spots these other friends. By the way, all these kids are doing different things. One of them was playing Tetris. I know because that sound, I recognise that yeah. sound on of his, doing on a his... line on Tetris. Big fat Man, boy. PTSD on that. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Um, so. There's all these other friends, isn't there? And we've kind of semi-mentioned one already. So there's a Go to Hell Herman, which is quite a good name, <laughs> uh, Velcro Head and Graggy. And they all hate Graggy. Yeah. He's, dressed, he's dressed like an 80s um, like wrestling villain, isn't he? Like a wrestling Yeah, heel. one of those weightlifters for, um, <laughs> from the circus. <laughs> eggs and steak and steak and eggs. That's what you have for breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. And then this fairy called Namby Pamby, John. You looked this yeah. up, eh? Well, I looked it up, but it basically just says Namby Pamby is a term um, for uh, affected weak and uh, modelling speech or verse. It originates from Namby Pamby by Henry Carey, but I don't know if it's 
if it's poetry or he'd written about something, because it says it's a, it's a poetic satire about somebody called Ambrose Phillips. So I don't know if it was an affectionate name for this Ambrose Phillips. It wasn't very clear. Mm, it's not likely to be affectionate, is it? No, well, no, no, really. <laughs> Namby pamby. <laughs> but I, so I looked up and it just it was too many conflicting ideas about where it actually resonated from, but the, 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 sort of whittled it down to this one guy, this Henry Carey. Mm. Okay. They have this sick contest, and Velcro Head explodes his Velcro head. Yeah, no. uh, this, I thought this looked quite cool with these cogs inside. Uh, see, Homer, that's why your robot didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doctor and Mum show up. He's prescribed these green pills that will get rid of Fred. Also, a nurse, uh, which oh, looks like boy. Chris Farley in a wig. Oh, it really does, doesn't yeah. it? She, she threatens does. Elizabeth with violence, and Fred reminds her of the time that Dad threw the mega bitch out of the window. Uh, this scene where Dad knocks the cornflakes flakes over, and her and Fred make a mud pie. Fred rips the jack out of the jack in a box. Uh, when he's hiding from her and puts it on the mud pie. He's scared when mum comes in, so he hides in the Jack in the Box box, which is a thing. Yeah. Uh, and mum comes in and tapes it over, threatening to throw it in the trash and then it'll get crushed if she touches it. And that's basically like wailing from her. Like this Aye. kid, this screaming from this kid. And she writes Fred a letter. If you come back, I promise we'll run away together. Did, did uh, it touch in, you? Yeah, did it, it did a little you? bit. Yeah, Aww. yeah, yeah. Uh, back in the present day, um, he said Fred said he found the letter in the shed, uh, and basically she then starts cleaning up all the the cornflakes, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they agree to run away together in the end to Charlie's wine tasting party. Right? Oh, the gala, which is basically a wine fest, because I'm like a wine gala, but yeah. it's basically just a wine festival. But in this film, it's something totally different. But uh, basically, yeah. it's a, a wine festival. He, uh, I thought you said he likes wine. Why does he keep spitting it out? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That's very good. <laughs> and we pulled the cherry off the toga. That was funny as well. Yeah, that was very good too. <laughs> I've missed a little bit where um, they lock they lock her away. She's trying to get out. Um, she sneezes again because there's more gladioli. She sneezes this pathetic 1991 cartoon of Fred up the stairs. Yep. Um, and then they lock her back in. She climbs out the window and outside on the tree is simple Mickey who's got her dress for the party. Yeah, Mickey says he was six when they moved away. He takes it at the party, and when he and he was upset, they would never have fun together again. And then he says, "It's funny when you're right about the wrong things." Now, I've watched this film twice this week, and I've watched that scene three or four times. I cannot fathom what that means. Hi. Uh... It doesn't, he, he, yeah. Doesn't it? I was upset we'd never have fun together. It's funny when you're right about the wrong things. But they have had fun together. He had fun at the fucking dinner, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Catapult in his scran everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Who I knows? don't even thought of that. At the party, Fred does another upscale, but this time he's got Proto the Mask kind of bug out cartoon yeah. eyes and like steam coming out of his ears. Uh, Annabelle, by the way, did you spot who this was? Uh, Bridget Fonda. She done this Bridget? as a favourite of Phoebe Cates. Oh, did she really? Yeah, they were friends, so she done the cameo as a as a as a, as a because a, a really good mate. She done it as a a wee thank you. For, I don't think they done a couple of things together, so it was maybe, maybe right. this was a wee thank you. Little tiny Bridget Fonda. She was so little. She was, she was so tiny cute wee. and tiny wee. Yeah. Um, this was a year before she hit massive in uh, Single White Female. All oh, right, okay, because she looked good, really good. Yeah, yeah. Really she, good. she she looked, but she looked she looked very young, John, steady. <laughs> I mean, she's probably like thirty, but yeah, she looked uh, she looked very young. Um, I, single white female, I would love to do with uh, uh, Amanda from uh, Super Familiar with the Wilsons or oh, Hand that Rocks the Cradle. She's, she's too nice like that. for that. She's no, 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 because we've talked about these on on their podcast before. We've talked about these kind of things on their podcast, and one hundred percent. I think she'd be up for that. We no. just need to find some time for her because she's such a busy, busy, she's busy a, mom. A busy bee, isn't she? Busy working person. Josh, yeah. Josh, sort that out for us. Josh, I'm waving my hand dismissively. Go on, Josh. Go on, Josh. You do that. You do that. Have a, have a <laughs> word with our Amanda and get her on, please. Uh, we'll do that in, uh, we'll do it in October. We'll do it in October. Yep. Annabelle is basically the one that Charles is, is been, been at it with. Um, Elizabeth's upset. She goes back to the apartment and Charles turns up. They head to bed and they're at it and they hear this key in the door and she's like, oh, that'll be Fred. And he's like, 
Fred, who's this guy? You're, you're married. I'm going to go and take him out or whatever. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, why is, no, I, I is, 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 it, you... is, is he violent? Is he violent? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> extremely. Um, he goes to hit him with a pen and ends up knocking uh, a pan, rather, a and pen. ends up knocking out. A pan is mightier than a sword. <laughs> Charles and Elizabeth are at it, and he's, he goes, ooh, Annabelle. And she's like, Annabelle? He says, well, wouldn't you rather I said, ooh, Annabelle with you than oh, Lizzie with her? And I'm kind of like, that's the kind of flawless logic that means you should die <laughs> very fucking single, yeah, you yeah. dick. <laughs> uh, Charles gives her a green pill, and Fred starts to get a stomachache. Montage of them living their life and her taking pills. Uh, Elizabeth's making dinner for him. And she says, I'm happy now to Fred. And he says, if you're so happy, then why am I still here? Um, Pepper, she's now she now sneezes with Pepper as well, because why not? She yep. sneezes Fred onto this really strange partition wall between the kitchen and the bedroom that yeah, was half a wall. Yeah, I noticed that half and half, because she was in tapping it, and so it was literally just a, yeah. a stud like, wall. Just with... like the, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like the top of the set, basically. Yeah. Um <laughs> he hears uh, Charles talking to Annabella and he's like, I'm your fella, Annabella. Annabella. <laughs> and I was like, Bleh! sort that out, mate. Uh, Fred explains he's worse than the mega beast and when she threatens to take the final pill, he tells her to listen in and she says she can't leave him because she's scared to be alone. Aww. Fred shows her. Now, does he take her inside her, ho- her own head here? Uh, or does... Mm. Uh, it's a weird one because it feels as if he's taking her into his world. Yeah, yeah. But he, because at one point when he says, because he says he can't get back. Yeah. Nah, it's yes, it's that's right. One. Okay, it's yeah. A weird one. He goes at the dollhouse and Charles is revving his Jaguar, and he she right. takes off the hood ornament and it <laughs> flies away like a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> um, they can't get up the stairs because the stairs are just painted on. Like, yeah. They've painted onto this ramp. It looks good. Um, so Elizabeth imagines a tree and they climb up. She screams at mum, I'm not afraid of you. And mum just burns up. Um, in the bedroom, little girl Elizabeth's taped into her bed. That was weird, There's wasn't some, it? Something out of fucking Hellraiser. Oh, no. You know, this fucking Jack in the Box thing. I can show you such sights. <laughs> <laughs> um, grown Elizabeth explains she doesn't need to be afraid anymore. Uh, Fred says to Elizabeth she needs to leave alone. He can't go back now. Mm. He says, you don't need me. You've got you. Uh, I was like, oh, that's sad. Uh, Just kiss me and say drop dead Fred. So she kisses him on the lips, which is a bit fucking Savile, that like. They hug and he vanishes and Elizabeth's back in the apartment. Uh, Annabelle dumps Charles over the phone. Uh, and Elizabeth dumps this salad all over him before picking her nose and wiping it on him. Oh, by the way, I'd miss this bit that she she makes him dinner and uh, Fred's made a mud pie, hasn't he? Aye, and in the thing. And she says, "No, I'll make us a salad, a romantic salad." Oh, a romantic salad. <laughs> and I was kind of like, I mean, I'll be honest with you. If someone says they're going to make me dinner, they're going to make me something romantic. I'm wanting fucking steak or something. I don't yeah, know. certainly not a bloody uh, salad. I googled romantic salad, John, and the top recipe was as follows. One large beet. We got beets. Two cups of mixed salad greens. Mm -hmm. One tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. What a taste. Salt. Oh, right. That's not very romantic, that, is it? Well, John, turns out it is because the beetroot is sliced into heart shapes. Oh, so I lock that. up your women, men. There's a new <laughs> Casanova in town and his name's Planty, making <laughs> heart shaped beetroot salads for all the bitches. It's all about the beets, isn't it, Meg? Yeah, it's it's all beets. about the beets. Beating that root. <laughs> I mean, do you know what? If that if that is the level of a romantic meal in the states, I know. I'm just I'm gonna go for a I'm going out for a parmo, mate. <laughs> <laughs> a parma. <laughs> we're going to the Turkish uh, across from the castle again, mate. Is where, oh, where, yes. where we're going next time you're down. <laughs> Tasty oh, stuff oh, that, that was wasn't good. it? That was good. Anyway, Enjoyed that. Uh, yeah. If Antolia uh, Turkish restaurant in Carlisle wants to sponsor us. Yeah. we will I'll, sponsor I'll, them I'll do it for yeah I'll do it for one fucking kebab a week <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so she drives to mum's who explains that she only had the child to save her marriage and dad oh. only left because of her and I'm like this is like this is brutal this it's is meant to be dark, a happy ending but nah, she turns around um, 
and says, well, I'm leaving. She says, you can't leave. I'll be lonely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elizabeth tells her to get a friend. Ah, she goes, walks back, cuts off, yeah. kisses her, and gets, gets get a friend. I thought yeah. it was a good scene, to be fair. I yeah, so really. did I. She owns she owns mum properly. Aye. Outside at the Bunces, Tommy's daughter Natalie has a pretend friend as well. Who was it? Mm. Yeah, it was Drop Dead Fed. Sorry, mate. I was miles away there. I was like, who, who's that? <laughs> I thought you meant uh, who's wee lassie. <laughs> no, no, I don't know who the wee lassie was. Uh, the babysitter gets strung up like the fucking rebi- rebels in Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the fucking Ewoks have got her. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna take her away and eat her until until drop dead Fred comes out and <laughs> ah, good luck. Toa de Toa <laughs> Say Three Pay Oa <laughs> Um and it's a lovely ending because Drop Dead Fred's still around and says, You tell Drop Dead Fred to give him my love. And surely yeah. Drop Dead Fred at this point would have gone, Eh, girls, I don't like love. Uh, mm. But he doesn't, and it's cute, and it's a cute ending, and the kid's laughing and does the pinky promise. Thank you, thank you, that kid's going to lose her fucking finger. I know. When she I gets know. a little bit older, you know. John, any other fact? Just a couple. So, um, older research found that 20% of children ages 5 to 12 have imaginary friends. Mm. Girls are more likely than boys to have imaginary friends. But even more recent research has shown it's actually dropped down to 17%. Because they're blaming smartphones. All oh, right, okay. Um, smartphones. Fuck smartphones. off the Daily Mail. <laughs> um, things that were, things that were blamed on imaginary friends. So a stone father who blamed his imaginary friends for crashing his van on the motorway after being banned from driving and getting jailed. So he pretty much blamed his imaginary friend. <laughs> what? Stoned, crash. It was my imaginary friend. That's it. Somebody okay. else stabbed somebody. That was a bit dark. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> somebody else stabbed. <laughs> You've already got Robin Williams turned down the role of yep. Phoebe Cates' character. No. Uh, <laughs> but he chose Hook instead. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen Don't that. stop me, Smee. Stop me, Smee. Don't it's stop really, me. Really, really good, isn't that, uh, to be honest? Yeah, he's brilliant in that. Uh, Jennifer Connolly auditioned for the role. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, sequel was written, uh, but Rick said no. Uh, Jim Carrey was approached, but big yeah. budget issues meant it didn't happen. Yeah, that was that'd have been something else, wouldn't it? That would have been yeah, interesting. Eleven uh, percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, sorry, uh, one more for me. Sorry, um, this was in my head. Rick Mail. So apparently they wanted to set it in the UK and London okay. or England, but Rick Mail wanted to be a uh, cross Atlantic star, and that's why they set it up in America. All right, okay, yeah, mm, that's a that's a shame. Uh, dog poo, John. Um, dog poo has a reaction with children's eyes. If you get uh, dog poo in your eyes, it can blind children. What? Uh, which is uh, disgusting. Uh, and uh, without me to go, all Peter K. Uh, why don't you see white dog poo anymore? Because uh, there's not nearly as much Enough bone sun. meal <laughs> in dog food anymore. So that's why you don't see white dog poo right. anymore. Start feeding your dog's bones, lads, so we can all see some white dog poo. Uh, but no, clean it up as well, because, you know, uh, you oh don't God, want, you yeah, don't want yeah. a council on your back. Um, right, I, can't, I missed this from the beginning. There's a, there's a section, right, at the very, very beginning that says, uh, based on, it, the, the credit is such and such, suggested by, right? Right. Suggested by. Now, we've already had films that were based upon a New Yorker article, mm-hmm. right? So we've already done that. But a suggested by... So, like, somebody at some point in a in a bar said to the writer, I tell you, it's a good idea. Uh, she's still struggling to get over her uh, imaginary friend. And this person went, I'm oh, writing that down. And when the, the other person found out about it, they were all like, hang on a second, am I not getting any money for this? Oh, fuck, we better give them a credit. We better give them 10, bu- 10 bucks or something. Some- anyway. Enough for uh, the stupid credits. An American Werewolf in London has the ending title congratulating Princess Ch- Prince Charles and Princess Diana on their recent wedding. No way, really? <laughs> it does, it does absolutely. <laughs> does, uh, Solomon and Sheba from 1951 features a credit for orgy sequence organizer. Nice, nice. Uh, the Howling Three, the marsupials, I know you've seen that, John. No, I've seen it. Has a credit to the restaurant director for his Eggs Benedict. Wow. Yeah. Um, Australian melodrama In Search of Anna from 1978 features a dog named Billy and has an end credit telling viewers that Billy eats loyal dog food. <laughs> wow. 
talking about his point in that dog. <laughs> and that, John, is everything I've got. Okay. How many do you think we got while I top them up? Oh, God. I'm going to say 78. Higher. 88. 89. 89? Ooh, Jesus, that's Could have seen good. that from the start, and we've done it in almost, we've done it in an hour, pretty much. I mean, that's actually not too bad, considering I didn't think we'd get anywhere near that. Not so bad at all. Yeah, so that is us. Uh, right, again, patrons, give us give us a quid and we will uh, shout you out at the end of every episode and also just say some really, really nice things about you because we think you're, uh, because we think you're smashing. Top banana, much. top banana. Uh, this week, you could be picking up uh, an epi- an e- uh, a bonus episode where I talk to a fantastic Glaswegian uh, filmmaker, uh, Andy McEwen, about his film. Uh, that was so much fun, and I learned a lot about films. And he's inspired me to get back writing, John, as if I've what? got any fucking spare time. Uh, but yeah, he's inspired me to work Rich, on... Richard's going to lose a shit with you. <laughs> yeah, you, there's no shit left to lose, I'll be honest. <laughs> Right, so lovely, lovely patrons. Some are imaginary, but most are not. Nigel Davis, you're going top of the, the pops again because we're really worried about you. Uh, reach out and tell us what we can bring over for you. Uh, we'll treat you to a few bits and pieces to help you make you feel better. Uh, he runs the Wonder Emporium, accessories for tabletop and mini games. Search Wonder Emporium on Etsy and Facebook. Mention the podcast to get some free stuff. Uh, Paul and Sophie from SP Film Viewers, they watched Prey this week, by the way. Uh, oh, have you they? seen it yet, John? Oh, it's good. It's fun, it. isn't it? It's very good. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's back to, back, back back to, to basics. To, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, lovely, lovely people. Uh, you lovely people. Uh, Dan Belson, Gavin Belson from Be There with Belson podcast. What lovely thing are you going to say about them this week, John? Hey, I say it best when I say nothing at all. <laughs> Yeah, you fucking do. Uh, yeah, uh, lovely, lovely boys. Yeah, good chance. Uh, they, uh, yeah, they're, they're fantastic. I've been having some great crack with uh, with Dan this week because while I've been at the gym, I've been watching the uh, Arsenal documentary that's been on on Amazon, Amazon Mate. Prime, and just. The, the boy's got the boy's got the banter it's great uh aaron z1 podcast audio drama about zombies and a relationship oh uh, it's just it's it, it isn't so romantic but it is so romantic at times it's really good i'm not i'm not an old romantic you know me john but they just, yeah, they're, but they're, love just a they're surviving and it's great i hope they don't die um Joe Higgins, Hallmark of Greatness, weird thing about that. Damn it, Vince Podcast. Um, not going to shout out Ellis, although I probably will shout out Ellis because he's such a great guy. Uh, also from uh, Damn it, Vince. But pay us, Ellis, pay us, and you'll get a proper shout out of your own. Um, oh, uh, Hallmark of Greatness, by the way, every other week we're doing like the worst films in the world, and I've found probably the worst fucking film coming this week. It's probably going to even worse than... Um, what we talked about, uh, Nightmare Circus. Uh, right. Horror Circus, Terror Circus. I don't think you've listened to yet, have you? I sent no. you the link, but I don't think you've had a chance to listen to but it. But the Terror Circus sounds good to me. <laughs> oh, mate, no, 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 no. It's it's it's, it's not super good. Bad. Yeah, it is super bad. Uh, Punk from What the Fuck Do You Want? He's a prick. He talks about games, but I really love him. He's such a such a lovely, pricky guy. Uh, Mono uh, from Mono Rants the Boys. I love Mono. He's already had a shout out at the start of this. Shout out. Is that shout a shout out, out, you schlag. Um, he is. Uh, oh, he still wants us to go to his murder farm, by the way. Uh, I don't think I don't think we're going to do that just yet. There's uh, been a murder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but they are. They they covered. They, they, Brotherhood of the Wolf. Does that sound like a film you know, John? Sounds like something you do. Something. I thought it was the one from the eighties, but it's the one from the two thousands they talked about this week. No, no, okay, no. Yeah, it's yeah, brutal stuff. Um, oh, uh, Biggie, Stig, and Gadget. Uh, we've had two of them on in the last uh, few man. weeks. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're getting Biggie on. Biggie wants to talk ice pirates, John. What? I knew you would lose your shit, which is uh, what I said. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. I think Bigglesworth are about the same age. So yeah, yeah. that'll really, really work. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, Ian for Court Connections podcast. I'm on there again shortly talking about the Lego Star Wars Christmas uh, holiday special. The Lego Star Wars one, not the 70s one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gav McGill, longtime supporter of the pod. He raised about 280 quid. 
by doing kilt walk in Dundee this weekend. Oh, good 28 man. miles. What a fucking legend. 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 What legend. a great guy. Uh, you'll still get hold of him. Uh, other people that support us. Ian McOmish, who I will be seeing shortly to watch the Wimbledon Carlisle game. Uh, our dear friend Phil, of course. Uh, Rachel, uh, who helped me with some research. Uh, oh, not this week. Didn't that win any research this week? Uh, Saz and um, getting them all on. Nothing to advertise, but I'm getting them all on because... I think they're all wonderful human beings. Yeah. Uh, they're, all, finally, they're all givers. They're all givers. Josh Wilson. What are you going to say nice about Josh Wilson? So Josh has reached out. It looks like we're going to do another, hopefully do another quiz. So I'm looking forward to that. It's been all right. Okay. Long. It's been too all long right. Okay. He had the dulcet tones of that beautiful American oh, man. I love, I love his face. I talk to him every day, you know. I love his face. Yeah, He's such a handsome boy. Is it because you've got a pillow with his face on it, though? It <laughs> I wish. The real person. Man, I wish. <laughs> I would be a happy man if I went to sleep holding that. Uh, I've got yeah, one for jo- Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> you have. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's horrifying. It really is. <laughs> right, that's it. That's it. Oh, if you, want to, if you want to do that, go to patreon.com forward slash 100 things. Uh, give us a quid. We will shout you out uh, and we'll get you on. We'll get you on an episode. Why the fuck not? Yeah. yeah. Um, but that is is it. Uh, I spent some money on some stickers, patrons. Yay. So I, I, will, I will send you. If, if you're on that list, you're getting a sticker. If you, if you sub in the next couple of weeks you're also getting a sticker. And I am paying the postage out of my own pocket. It will cost Ooh. me more for the postage, the postage for that that fu- than the stickers are worth, <laughs> right? But you can have a sticker if you're on that list. Uh, DM me your address and we'll, we'll figure that That's shit brilliant. out. Uh, if you live near any of the others, <laughs> hook a brother up and uh, let me send it to one of them <laughs> yeah. to, save, to yeah. save me 90p per... per, per and per. send his pictures in. We'll do a collage of your pictures stuck in oh, various... Oh, what a great situation. idea, John. Yeah, yeah. We'll absolutely do that, yeah. Anyway, that's it. John, what do you want to say to the lovely people? Lovely people, thank you for listening, and it's been an absolute pleasure. This film wasn't a pleasure. It's not as pleasurable as I thought it was going to be, but we did work it for 80, 80 plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's always a pleasure doing this with you anyway, John. It's always the highlight of my week. Oh, me. This it is, and I'm on all sorts of fucking podcasts, so, you know, for this to still be our baby <laughs> is, is I something know. else. I still, I still get a lot of fun. I still yeah. love looking at your beautiful face when I do this. Oh, I know, yeah. So, I just, I, I, we, we, need, we, need to, we need to meet up. We need cuddles. I still gives me a semi. We need some cuddles. We should, we should dock. We should dock. <laughs> <laughs> we should dock. <laughs> anyway, John, next week, it's not September. It's no, it's close to September. It's Sly Timber. September, where we're going to be talking about the films of Sylvester Stallone. Yep. Uh, what film are we talking about first? So, we've already done the Stallone, haven't we? So, yeah, we've already done D- D- Demolition Man. We're doing First Blood. We are doing First Blood. We're welcoming back the wonderful, the hilarious, the studious. Studious, Stud- studious, S- most studious, most studious. Oh, they got a lot of uh, accolades, but no studious. It's studious. He's the most <laughs> studious. Uh, yeah, Paul Payne. Payne. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Paul Payne, who we we love. He was brilliant on Death Wish. Oh, he was uh, getting too, drunker and drunker. It was brilliant. Marry me. Marry me. I still love that wee, <laughs> so love that wee picture. <laughs> so we can do, uh, we can do that. Still do hold that wee picture dear in my heart. <laughs> uh, but for now, he's been John. I've been Planty. And this has been Patron Special Episode, uh, where we did 89 things from Drop Dead Fred. See ya. See you guys. <laughs>